Welcome back to Brainwave Learning Hub. Today, we're diving into a fascinating question that's surrounded by both curiosity and myth. What does sex really do to your heart? Beyond the passion, the science is surprising. From how your pulse races to whether intimacy is actually good for your cardiovascular health. Stay tuned, because the truth may change the way you look at both love and longevity. It's a question that honestly often comes up. Sometimes whispered with a hopeful smile, man. Can sex really count as a workout? We all know that a brisk walk is good for us, or a session at the gym is good for us. But what about the activities we enjoy in the bedroom? The simple answer is, yes, sex is indeed a form of physical activity. It raises your heart rate, and it increases your breathing, and engages various muscle groups throughout your body. Much like any other form of exercise, it places a temporary demand on your cardiovascular system, which is a good thing for keeping it strong and responsive. It's certainly more strenuous than just sitting on the sofa watching television. However, let's be clear about what kind of exercise we are discussing. Think of it as a form of light to moderate exercise that engages your body in a unique way, combining physical exertion with emotional benefits that other exercises simply don't offer. To truly understand the physical demands of sex, scientists have actually measured it. They use a unit called the Metabolic Equivalent of Task, or MET, to quantify the energy we expend during different activities. For context, sitting quietly and doing nothing is about one MET. This is our baseline, the energy your body needs just to function at rest. When we start moving, the METs go up. A slow walk might be around two METs. Something more vigorous like playing tennis could be seven METs. This gives us a brilliant, simple scale to compare different forms of physical exertion and see where sex fits in. So where does sexual activity land on this scale? Studies that have monitored couples during intercourse found that, on average, the activity clocks in at around 3 to 4 METs. This puts the energy expenditure of sex on par with a brisk walk. It's also comparable to playing a round of doubles tennis or doing light housework like mopping the floor. For men, the peak effort can sometimes reach a little higher, perhaps closer to five or six METs for a brief period. That's similar to a gentle jog. A 30-minute session of moderate intensity sex might burn somewhere between 85 and 100 calories. A 30-minute run could burn roughly three times that amount. However, it's certainly better than the negligible amount you'd burn while watching a film. When you engage in sexual activity, your body sets off a cascade of physiological responses, Nub, and your heart is right at the center of the action. It all begins with arousal, which triggers the release of hormones like adrenaline. This is your body's fight or flight hormone, um, and it signals your heart to start beating faster and more forcefully. This increased heart rate is necessary to pump more oxygen-rich blood to your muscles, Anna, which are beginning to tense and work. Your breathing rate also quickens to take in more oxygen from the air, ensuring your body has the fuel it needs for the exertion ahead. As sexual activity progresses and excitement builds, your heart rate continues to climb. For most healthy individuals, a typical resting heart rate is somewhere between 60 and 100 beats per minute. During sex, this can rise to an average of 110 to 130 beats per minute. At the moment of orgasm, it can peak even higher sometimes reaching up to 170 beats per minute for a very brief period. Once the activity is over, your body quickly begins to return to its normal resting state. This rapid recovery is a sign of a healthy and flexible cardiovascular system. One of the most persistent and honestly frightening myths surrounding sex is that it's a common trigger for a heart attack. We've all seen it portrayed in films or on television. A character, often an older man, clutches his chest in the heat of the moment. This dramatic depiction has unfortunately created a great deal of anxiety for many people, especially those who may have existing heart conditions or are simply getting older. But is there any truth to this widely held belief? Let's look at this logically. As we've already established, the physical exertion of sex is, for most people, equivalent to a brisk walk or climbing a couple of flights of stairs. If you can manage those activities without experiencing chest pain, shortness of breath or other worrying symptoms, then the likelihood of sex causing a problem for your heart is extremely low. The heart is a powerful muscle designed to handle variations in demand. The brief 
moderate increase in heart rate during sex and blood pressure is well within the normal operating capacity of a healthy cardiovascular system. The popular myth often fails to account for other contributing factors. When a cardiac event does occur during sexual activity, it's rarely the sex itself that is the sole cause. Often, the individual involved has severe underlying heart disease. Other circumstances include engaging in sex after consuming a heavy meal or after excessive alcohol or having an affair, which can add significant psychological stress and guilt. It's the combination of these elements, not the physical act of sex alone, that elevates the risk. So, the idea of sex being a primary trigger for heart attacks is largely overblown. For every dramatic story, there are millions upon millions of safe and healthy sexual encounters happening every single day without incident. The fear is far greater than the actual statistical risk. When we move away from myths and look at rigorous scientific studies for Manta, a much clearer and more reassuring picture emerges. One of the most famous studies published in the Journal of the American Medical Association looked at the link between sex and heart attacks. It found that for a healthy 50-year-old man, the risk of having a heart attack in any given hour is about one in a million. Sexual activity increases that risk to two in a million. That's a doubling, but still an incredibly tiny absolute risk. To put that risk into perspective, an hour of moderate physical exercise carries the exact same increase in risk. Furthermore, the research highlighted a fascinating protective effect. Men who exercised regularly had a much lower increase in risk during sex compared to those who were sedentary. The real danger isn't sex, these, uh, it's being physically unfit in general. A large-scale study conducted in Wales followed middle-aged men for over a decade and found that those who had sex two or more times a week were half as likely to have a fatal heart attack compared to men who had sex less than once a month. While this is a correlation and not direct causation, uh, it suggests a powerful connection between a healthy sex life and a healthy heart. Beyond heart attack risk, research points to other positive effects. Sex is known to lower blood pressure, reduce stress and improve sleep. When you weigh the minuscule transient risk against the substantial long-term benefits, the science comes down firmly on the side of sex being a heart-healthy activity for most people. While sex is safe and healthy for the vast majority of people, there are certain individuals who should exercise a bit more caution and have a conversation with their doctor. This is particularly true for people diagnosed with a significant heart condition. If you have unstable angina, that's chest pain that is unpredictable and occurs at rest. Uncontrolled high blood pressure, a recent heart attack or heart surgery. It's wise to get medical clearance before resuming sexual activity. Your doctor can assess your situation and provide personalized guidance. The key question is whether your heart is stable enough to handle moderate physical exertion. A simple way they assess this is by asking about everyday tasks. Can you climb two flights of stairs or walk briskly for 15 to 20 minutes without chest pain, severe shortness of breath, dizziness or an irregular heartbeat? If you can comfortably do so, you are generally at low risk. Some heart medications like nitrates for chest pain can interact dangerously with erectile dysfunction drugs such as sildenafil, causing a sharp drop in blood pressure. Having a heart condition doesn't automatically end your sex life. For most with stable heart disease, resuming sexual activity aids recovery and quality of life. Open communication is the best tool for navigating sex safely with a pre-existing health concern. Embracing a heart-healthy sex life is about being informed and sensible, not fearful. Improve your overall fitness to make sex safer and more enjoyable. Regular cardiovascular exercise strengthens your heart muscle and improves efficiency. Walking, swimming, cycling. Your heart won't have to work as hard during sex or other activities. Think of it as training for life. A stronger, conditioned heart is less likely to be strained by intimacy. Beyond fitness, follow simple, practical tips. Avoid sexual activity immediately after a heavy meal. Avoid it after consuming a lot of alcohol. Be in a comfortable, familiar environment to reduce stress. Choose positions that are less physically demanding if needed. Make the experience relaxed and enjoyable. Communication with your partner is key. Being open about fears alleviates anxiety for both of you. Intimacy isn't just one act. It includes touching, kissing, emotional closeness. This holistic view reassures those worried about heart health. 
The message is overwhelmingly positive. A healthy sex life is more often a tonic for your heart than a threat. Moderate exercise, stress reduction, emotional bonding. Together, they create a powerful recipe for health and happiness. Sex can be a joyful, integral part of a heart-healthy lifestyle. It's an expression of vitality that connects us and contributes to a longer, happier life. Sex and heart health are often surrounded by myths, but science shows us that intimacy is more friend than foe when it comes to your cardiovascular system. For most people, it's not just safe. It's beneficial, lowering stress, improving sleep, and supporting long-term heart health. Remember though, if you have existing heart conditions, always consult your doctor. At the end of the day, a strong heart is built on a mix of fitness, balance, and connection. Thank you for watching Brainwave Learning Hub, where science meets everyday life.